I'm here to talk about books, obviously, so let's get started on some of the books that I enjoyed reading this week. The first is a nonfiction book, The Spectacular Sisterhood of Superwomen, Awesome Female Characters from Comic Book History, which is by Hope Nicholson, and I got to meet some really interesting female comic characters. So this book is a decade-by-decade -decade survey of the comic books industry, so the first chapter is about the 1930s and then the last chapter is about the 2010s. And the way that each chapter is structured is that it starts with a overview of industry trends and the female role in comics. And throughout, there's this big theme that there's always been female readers. During the golden age of comics, there were just as many female readers as male readers in the industry and in this genre. Admittedly, there was a recent uh, decade where female readership really took a dive, and that has probably led to why we still perceive the comics genre as a very male one. But it's, you know, the numbers have bounced back. There are a lot of female readers out there, and so it's really heartening to know that. Um, and in the middle of each chapter, moving along, is that there are character bios, and so we learn about characters in the comics of that particular decade of that chapter and it's really interesting that we learn about some like really amazingly feminist for their decade characters but we also um, learn about other ones that you know have their flaws and we and the author honestly talks about those flaws and the flaws of the comics that that, that character was in and then each chapter ends with a spotlight on an iconic character of that decade for that chapter. And it's really interesting to see what the author picked and to read about those. And so uh, I learned about all sorts of characters and about uh, a lot more just like contextual information about comics. So there's a lot of good info in here, whether you're a new reader to comics or you're a veteran comic reader. It's got really good stuff in here. And it's also like a really, really pretty um, book. So good for a coffee table. Uh, sort of read. Uh, another thing I read, I read some comics. So uh, first is volume one of Castle Waiting, which is by Linda Medley. And this is just like a lovely, heartwarming uh, graphic book. It starts as a retelling of Sleeping Beauty, but that's just the prologue to a vastly more interesting story of the castle after Sleeping Beauty leaves. Uh, it becomes kind of a refuge, and so people come to Castle Waiting. Our main character comes there, and she learns about the other occupants of Castle Waiting. I just delighted in hearing characters tell their stories. Particularly, there's a lot of stories about the characters pre-Castle Waiting lives, and I really enjoyed reading about that. It's a very pleasant, uh, enjoyable book. Uh, I also read a standalone graphic novel. I read Fun Home, which is a family tragic comic by Alison Bechdel, and it is the uh, basis for the musical Fun Home, which I have not seen, but I have listened to the music, uh, or most of the music of Fun Home. I think I like the graphic novel better from what I have, uh, my, my exposure to the musical. This is a really interesting, it's a memoir about the author's relationship with her father and also dealing with his untimely death. Her father was an English teacher and also the director of a funeral home, which the uh, family called the Fun Home, hence the title. And it's interesting to have, like, watching her deal with the memories. So. As soon after leaving home, Allison is in uh, college and she comes out as a lesbian and then at the same time she uh, discovers that her father is gay or queer. And then a few weeks after that, her father dies and it might have been a suicide. So the book is Allison going through her memories and trying to extract more meaning out of them. She makes a really heavy use of comparisons to classic works of literature to try to extract meaning and process her memories. So it's a pretty, pretty like niche book, it seems like, because it does uh, make so many references to literature. It's so erudite and it has that queer lens. But it is beautifully told, and I don't think there's anything wrong with the lenses that are used, even if they are very, very specific and not necessarily for everyone. But I do think that this is worth reading. It is one of the most interesting uh, works that I've read about processing personal loss. I think it's a very uh, interesting creative approach, and I really enjoyed reading this kind of melancholic, uh, analytical take on memories and grief and things like that. So it was really good. Uh, other things I've read, I read, or I finished, because uh, I started this quite a while ago, but I finished Star's End, which is by Cassandra Rose Clark, 
and in this sci-fi book we have our main character Esme who lives in a corporate space empire that is run by her father. Her father is the CEO of this four planet system and Esme is raised as the heir to this uh, corporate empire. She lives on the family estate of Star's End and as she's growing up she has these three uh, little half-sisters. After their mother dies, Esme takes it in her heart the responsibility to take care of them and she promises, very importantly promises, to protect her sisters in the face of and in spite of her father's corporate power games. Thing is, Esme starts to find out the uh, truth at the foundation of her father's empire, and as the secrets come up, Esme makes some decisions, and she loses her sisters. They're not dead, but they've run away and they've cut out contact. Esme can't find them anymore. So Esme is a deeply flawed character. Like she tries to do right, and sometimes she succeeds, but sometimes she's really far off the mark. Now, in the present timeline of this um, narrative, it's been practically a lifetime since Esme's sisters have left Star's End, and at this point, Esme's father is dying, and so Esme has a second chance to make her own decisions and some new choices as she tries to find and assemble her estranged sisters back to her father's dying bed. We follow Esme's new journey, and we learn in flashbacks exactly what happened in those years leading up to her sisters leaving. So it's a really fascinating but also slow book. It consistently drew me in, but very slowly drew me into this very complex character study of Esme. And particularly we're, we're studying her as a whole person, but really as a sister who could have, should have done more for her sisters to protect them in this corporate world. Um, so yeah, it's, it's enjoyable if you don't rush, then you can really get drawn into this rich, complex character study. So that's what um, Star's End. And lastly, I want to talk about Bellwether by Connie Willis, which is a book of farce. And generally, I'm not a huge fan of farce, so I wasn't a huge, huge fan of this. Um, I also am not the biggest fan of Connie Willis's more contemporary settings, where they're like fairly realistic and what some people call sci-fi light. I think she really shines in her time traveling books. Anyway, this book has stellar writing still, so after a few chapters, I kind of got more into it, and my enjoyment level of this book definitely went in like a crescendo. Uh, my highest enjoyment was at the end, the ending of this book was super great. So in this um, book our main character is Sandra, and she studies fads and trends at high tech corporation, and her fellow employee Ben, he uh, studies group theory, chaos theory, group behavior I guess is um, what I mean to say. Um, and they live in an absurd farcical world and in their absurd workplace they join projects and they end up dealing with this like really stubborn flock of sheep. It's so comical <laughs> and crazy. And so I'm not sure if I am exactly in the camp that recommends it or the camp that like, specifically does not recommend it. I'll say it's like really well written uh, and liking it probably a matter of taste. And so those are some of the books that I read this week. Hope you enjoyed hearing about them. Until next time, my lovelies.